All aboard! All aboard! My spiritual journey began to expand when I had a stranger than usual experience with a much older woman. I met her on a train trip. It was after college. I wasn't sure who I was or what I wanted. I loved teaching elementary students, but I felt other things calling to me. I didn't know what they were. The woman and I shared personal stories. She and parts of her stories felt strangely familiar. They felt like powerful coincidences without an answer. She gave me one bit of parting advice. I should go to Paris someday in the spring to experience its magic. The following summer, I decided to take her advice. I'm writing this in Paris. It's summer break from teaching. I didn't have time to come in the spring. Still, it's a beautiful time of year here. I've done some freelance writing for a newspaper and a couple of magazines. It's part of my journey of self-discovery. I spent hours writing and sipping milk and honey-laced coffee at my favorite cafe near River Seine. I like the total effect of the mixture. I've never been a fan of coffee's bitterness. Milk and honey have the ability to take the edge off many things as I attempt to understand who I am and what I really want for a career. I remember the woman from the train. She had wandered on her path and eventually found the passions for the life she wanted. Last week, I took a train trip to Riga, Latvia, to research my family history on my dad's side. I wanted to create a story about my parents, and my dad's background was obscure. His father passed before I was born, and I was five when his mother Past. What I know of them is from stories my father and his sister shared. Dad had a way of bringing family history alive by engaging not only my ears, but also creating pictures in my mind. Both of his parents were older professionals who had put off marriage and children, unusual for their time. They lived in the Tepsk, which was a Russian cultural center. They embraced all the arts, especially classical music and the paintings of Marc Chagall, who they suspected was a long lost Vitebsk cousin who had migrated to Paris. As much as my grandparents wanted to stay in Vitebsk, they knew they had to leave because the political situation would get worse and their lives would be in danger. They thought that Riga on the Baltic Sea would be a safer place. It was a cultural center and a seaport which could provide ship passes should it be necessary. When I think about that, I realize they had had great foresight. If they had made another choice, I might not exist. When my grandmother became pregnant with my dad, she and my grandfather got on a ship for America. I think they must have had inside information that it would be advantageous for them in the future if their child had American citizenship. They stayed in New York until my dad was born and returned to Riga for several years. When my dad was six, 
a very tall man in heavy boots and a military uniform came to their home. Shortly after, in the middle of the night, his parents hid him under a blanket in a wooden cart with a few family belongings. They gave him the job to hold tightly to the family crest and heirloom, a hand-carved Lion of Judah. It was the ancient symbol of the biblical tribe of Judah. When they got to the Baltic, they boarded a ship to New York. My father's first glimpse of America was the Statue of Liberty. Throughout his childhood and young adult years, he was drawn to the arts. After college, he was selected for a major Broadway musical, Good News. One day during rehearsals, he was running down the theater staircase from the dressing rooms, and one of the dancers was rushing up the steps. He stopped her and asked her what she was doing Friday night. She told him she didn't date, and she was having dinner with her aunt and uncle. She invited him to join them. Six weeks later, when the show was on tour, they got married. They figured two could live more cheaply than one. It was 1929. The stock market had just crashed. A few years later, they decided to have children. They left professional performing. Dad used his education to get into the corporate world of the early days of television. Mom taught dance and got involved in early childhood education. Eventually, I arrived, the baby of the family. I loved asking them stories about their life before me. One day, I asked Dad why he and Mom didn't follow any particular religion. He suggested we go into the backyard and he would tell me a story his father told him. It might answer my question. I can still hear his voice in my head. It's like it was yesterday. The facts felt stranger than fiction. But he had a beautiful speaking voice, and I loved listening to it. My dad and I remained close. He was my best male friend. With his typical outrageous sense of humor, he told me he would pass on a major holiday to ensure I would never forget him. Decades later, July 1976, he passed just as we celebrated the 200th anniversary of American independence. I was playing some of his favorite classical music. I had an experience I'd never had before or since. I heard Dad's laughter all around me and his voice. True to my very efficient manner, I managed to pass across the street from the crematorium where you need to have my body taken. During my recent research trip to Riga, I couldn't find anything about my grandparents, maybe because they hadn't lived there very long and had kept a low profile. I didn't have time to go to Vitebsk to research further. In addition, countless vital records had been destroyed during wartime. I was satisfied with the stories I knew. They felt as real as anything I might find in Vitebsk. Mom's family history was equally obscure. Her father passed before she was born, and she was adopted by her stepfather, who passed when she was a teen. Her mom never saw her parents again after she left Europe 
at 15 to go to America with her older brothers and sisters. Shortly after arriving in America, she ran away to follow her dream, but was forced to return to the family because she was a minor. For most of her life, she rebelled against the norm and taught my mom to be her own person, which included letting mom, only 16, join a chaperoned vaudeville dance troupe, which was touring the U.S. and Canada. When I was 16, Mom took out her scrapbooks from those years and shared many stories related to the pictures, news clippings, and other memorabilia. Unlike Mom and her mother, I did not feel the need to run away or leave home. But I remained close to both of them over the decades. I admired Grandma's strong, independent spirit. She had survived the loss of two of her other children, outlived three husbands and a fiancé, was a small business owner, and was involved in New York's local and national politics. She loved people, knew who she was, and stood her ground. My mom adored her. Grandma's passing, followed by my dad's a few years later, diminished Mom's inner glow and passion for life. She had lost her two best friends. Like Dad, she had told me she would pass on a major holiday to ensure that I remember her. She outdid Dad by passing at the end of a week commemorating five major events which only coincide every several years. Passover, Good Friday, Mom and Dad's birthdays, and Easter. The moment she passed in my arms, I felt Dad's presence in the room. He was welcoming her to the other side in his birthday suit because it was his birthday. She smiled as she took her last breath. Both of my best friends were gone, and I felt like an adult orphan. I'm glad to be in Paris, where I feel free to be who I need to be, just as my parents would wish. The family stories nourish me. They offer lessons in what it means to be a woman, have career goals, and have a family life. Wherever I go, whatever I do, I take their joy, sorrow, challenges, and accomplishments with me. I have the DNA of a strong woman. That guidance lights my way. For a while longer, I'll stay in Paris, sit at my favorite cafe, sip milk and honey, laced coffee. People watch and write. There are stories all around. As dust creeps in and Paris lights come on, the flowing water of the Seine reminds me of how all our lives are connected, even though they flow together from so different sources. The destination isn't always clear, yet destiny is a part of it all. I know someday in the future I will return to Paris. Perhaps I'll find my destiny here. <laughs>